Good afternoon and welcome to this uh, UNIMED seminar. It's a new faculty member um, seminar today and it will be given by Professor Torzilli, who is here. And I would particularly like to thank the students for coming here during their lunch time, which I understand it's difficult, but today I think you will not be disappointed by spending your lunch time here. Um, Professor Guido Torzilli graduated in medicine and surgery at the University of Milan in 1988, and he did his residency in surgery, in general surgery, at the same university. Um, then he went to Japan, in Tokyo, at the Department of Surgery of the University of Tokyo, where he did a PhD in hepatobiliopancreatic surgery, and he became assistant professor of surgery at the hepatobiliary pancreatic division. Uh, later on, he came back to Italy, worked at the hospital of Lodi for some years, and then he moved to Humanitas, uh, to Instituto Clinico Humanitas uh, in uh, 2006, uh, where he was chief of the liver unit and then head of the liver unit, and in, from 2014, he became director of the department of hepatobiliary and general surgery. His academic career was mainly spent at the University of Milan, where he was first assistant and then associate professor. And from the 1st of October of 2015, he is full professor of surgery at Humanitas University. Guido is a real pioneer in hepatobiliary surgery and in the use of uh, ultrasound for intraoperative staging and for the resection of liver, tumor, liver tumors by the so-called radical but conservative policy. He has pioneered a number of novel uh, surgical procedures, as the hooking technique, the compression segmentectomy, the mini mesohepatectomy, liver tunnel, and recently the upper transversal hepatectomy. He also designed and patented a new probe for intraoperative ultrasound use. Finally, he has been author and co-author of more than 150 papers on international journals with an H index of 31. So I'm really pleased to give him the stage for his talk that is entitled Navigating into the Liver, the Tale of a Fascinating Journey. Thank you, Guido. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefano, for the introduction. Uh, I'm sorry for stopping your lunch, so for you, and you, as you can imagine, also for me, is a big effort uh, due to my size. And, uh, but the surgeon has to endure, at least the surgeon. Sometimes we have to skip the lunch time for surgery. Now is for the pleasure of being together with you in this, uh, in this uh, lesson. Uh, I would like to... You know, it's uh, difficult because I have to capture your interest in a very technical uh, perspective in, and in a very uh, uh, focused and specialized kind of surgery, which is uh, uh, liver surgery. And uh, I want to start uh, terrifying you, showing that I will start with the history of liver surgery, so you can be bothered and sleep well during the my talk. This is the liver. I, we will do a, I, I, I named journey because we have to uh, pass through the concept of the liver in the years, not exactly from the Egyptian. This is a stone representing the liver in the Egypt uh, era, up to the navigation into the liver in the era of the virtual reconstruction of the organ. Uh, moving to the 16th century, a, a, a surgeon, but at that time the surgeons were more or less like barbers, realized that the liver bleeds, you know, because it's uh, filled with blood and glisson. When you study anatomy, you will notice that uh, the glissonian pedicle are named on this, uh, uh, based on, this, uh, on the discovering of this author, uh, boiled the liver for an hour, removed the parenchyma, did a cast, uh, removed the parenchyma, and injected a milky solution into the portal vein, and he saw 
the fluid coming out from the IVC. So he realized that there was an inflow and an outflow. Uh, you know, the researcher, at least the surgeon, were lazy because it takes uh, uh, some centuries. We have to achieve the 1886, uh, January uh, 15, in Trieste, in Italy. It was the first experience of a liver resection. Unfortunately, the patient died. Um, the su first successful was, was done by a German, Berlin, 1887, one year later. And, uh, uh, but the big step forward was a simple maneuver introduced by Pringle, uh, who was uh, uh, arguing that uh, clamping the hepatic pedicle, so the inflow to the liver, you can reduce the bleeding, and then you may enhance your capability and possibility to operate patient with something bed into the liver. It was published in 1908 uh, on anaso surgery, which is uh, the Bible of the surgeons. Mm -hmm. Then, always the main concern, because the liver is uh, full of blood, we have to control the bleeding. And in 1966, so several years later, uh, this uh, group of authors from the United States, anaso surgery, they proposed some route to get access to the inferior vena cava and to control the blood inflow and outflow, so to isolate from the uh, cardiovascular system the liver, then being more aggressive towards this organ. It, we have to wait up to 1999 uh, from this French surgeon, my friend Jacques Belditi, who was uh, publishing in Anaso Surgery, the first randomized trial in which he was showing that the Pringle was right, but you have to clamp intermittently uh, the, the, the pedicle to allow better results in terms of outcome. And we were the first group that in 2012 reported that we can be more aggressive and exceed 120 minutes of intermittent clamping safely in the patients. But, last but not least, Makuchi, one of the pioneers, and my master in this sense, in this kind of surgery, uh, demonstrated, and I was the first author of this paper, that uh, the total vascular exclusion was uh, useless in most of the patients. And with some tricks, you can do liver surgery also for advanced tumor, like this big tumor surrounding the inferior vena cava and stricturing the inferior vena cava in a uh, uh, way without uh, so uh, aggressive policy. Don't be bothered. Unfortunately, there is no food, but please don't do like him. Mm, we move a little bit uh, farther, if the computer follow me, and we get into the liver. The liver is this one, a sort of labyrinth of vessel. James Cantils find out a line, anatomical line, that can be recognized somehow uh, superficially. And uh, Hugo Rex de described this line, the, the, which is, uh, you know, um, underneath the, the, the um, falciform ligament. The only two landmarks on the face of the liver. The liver indeed uh, has an anatomy which is uh, quite complex. Uh, it appears uh, divided schematically in a, uh, this is the falciform ligament, the right lobe, who is this one? Left lobe, and there is uh, the country line which is uh, indicating where the middle hepatic vein is running and achieve the gallbladder here, starting from the hepatocaval confluence. There is an inflow system, portal vein, hepatic artery. This is, these are glissonian pedicles. And then outflow system. So we have three kinds of vascular system in the same organs, and we cannot forget also the biliary tree with the bile juice that flow into the duodenum. 
So this is a complex organ which uh, can uh, threaten, which has threatened many surgeons in facing uh, the problem that can disease this organ. Thank you for one of, you know, I want to wait up the name of uh, the guy that did the schema appears. Uh, then, according to the few landmarks, uh, the surgeon that wants to operate and wants also to operate the, the, the liver, try to uh, find a way to divide the organ. And the only landmark that I show you was the country line. The only one that can be recognized by outside, clamping the pedicles outside the liver. This is the yellow line. And at the same time, Onjo, 1949, and Lortagiacon, 1952, devised uh, the uh, vertical dissection proposal along the country's line, which was introducing the right hepatectomy and the left hepatectomy. I was invited in 2001 in Paris to the first uh, anniversary of the 50 years uh, of the first uh, right hepatectomy done by Lord Tajacob. And nobody there knows that in reality a Japanese did it one year before. But uh, uh, there was a Japanese speaker, Makuchi, that started this lecture saying, you know, we did it one year ahead. <laughs> and uh, this is an example of uh, a right hepatectomy. You can discover, you know, disclose the cantiline just clamping the pedicle at the hepatic hilum, and you know, the demarcation line is clear, then you follow this line, and you know, this is the pedicle dissected, so you can see the pedicles, you can ligate the vessel towards the, the, the side that you want to remove, the right, in this, in this case, and then you follow the line, and you remove the entire right lobe. But another guy from the United States, this is a real pioneer, is the one that has pioneered the liver transplant, Tom Starts. One of the, the single surgeon that is within the first 80 scientists in the history of medicine. And uh, he uh, proposed other two lines. Of course, the one of Hugo Rex, but also this one, separating the anterior sector and the posterior one published on 1982 and 1975. So they were indicating the way of removing the entire left liver extended to the anterior segment, which is the left trisectionectomy, and the entire right liver extended to segment four, which is the extended right trisectionectomy. And these are examples of, this is the right, only the left lobe is remaining, and this is the left, the right hepatic vein, completely exposed. This is the inferior vena cava, and only segments six and seven remain in the patient. And according with this proposal, two surgeons were pioneering the possibility to operate the patient with liver tumors, essentially liver metastasis, colorectal liver mets, in 1980 and 1986. Hudson and Gennari. Gennari was a surgeon that has worked here for several years was one of the pioneers. But the problem is, uh, when you remove, uh, following the vertical dissection, you limit yourself. Because you can, you have to remove a lot of liver parenchyma, even to, to removing tiny lesion inside. You have to follow this line. You have, otherwise you are blinded, blinded. You are like a submarine without a sonar. Then uh, the problem is, uh, the future remnant, li remnant liver, which can be overcome when you have to face with the peripheral palpable lesion. You can do limited resection, like uh, nicely pictured in this video, always by Procopio. <laughs> Next, uh, but the problem is that if you increase the number of uh, segments that we are re you are removing, especially if it, it is a cirrhotic liver, this is the rate of mortality, increasing the number of segments of removing. This is a right hepatectomy, more than 3%. The trisectionectomy is around between the 4 and the more than 6% in mortality. 
And this happens when you want to face with the deep located lesion. It means those lesions that are close to the major vessel inside the liver. This vessel we named the liver skeleton. Of course, it's not a real skeleton. It's composed by connective tissue and vessels. With this condition, you are obliged to remove a lot of liver, and you, have ris you are risky, the, liver, uh, the patient is risking the liver failure. The uh, surgeon, uh, mainly in Europe and the United States, essentially in Europe, modified an oncological concept of uh, the surgical onco uh, oncology. They accepted to propose surgery following the vertical line to patients with several metastases or several tumors inside the liver, they accept the staged operation. They don't want to clean all the liver at once, but they accept to do that in two steps. Uh, the French Henri Bismuth and René Adam, two-stage hepatectomy, they clean the left in the first operation and remove the right in the second operation, and the left was grown. The second operation is uh, quite uh, recent, 2014, the HALPS procedure, they clean the left and also divide at the same time the right and the left liver. They obtain much more uh, increment of the left lobe uh, volume and then uh, they can conduct the, at the end the two operations. The problem of these two procedures with the two stage, 340% uh, cannot complete the second operation and this is the survival of these patients. They drop down immediately. And the Alps, only three, four percent drop out due to the insufficient uh, liver hypertrophy, hypertrophy, but the mortality of the operation is high, is around 10, 15 percent. Sorry. Unfortunately, I know that there is no food, so you have to stay here without. The change was started in Japan, where they have a lot of uh, tumor, primary tumors, hepatocellular carcinoma, and oncologically to treat in a local way, the hepatocellular carcinoma, you have to face with two problems. There are micro, the tumor tend to spread into the liver by uh, intrahepa uh, intrahepatic satellites and vascular invasion. Then you have to remove not only the tumor, but you have to remove the area in which the tumor is inserted. But you have to do that in a conservative way. Uh, Claude Quinault showed that the liver is composed by segments in 1954. On the book, you can see that the segments are like this. But in reality, the segmentation of the liver is like this. So you cannot recognize the border, the edge of the segment that you want to remove in which the tumor is. And this is the main contribution in, in 1980 of uh, Macucci, who used the ultrasound and made uh, the liver a transparent organ. We have finally the, the sonar. And then the life change for the surgeon. From this here, the progress in liver surgery speed up. He was injecting the color inside the portal vein and then you see here, nicely shown, this is his own uh, uh, picture, with the guide of ultrasound, select the portal vein, inject the color, uh, the dye inside, and this is the segment eight, uh, well depicted on the surface. Then you can do exactly the anatomical resection of segment eight. You overcome the problem of few landmarks of, on the liver surface. And we did the uh, something more because it was difficult to puncture. It required to, for the educational process of the liver surgeon to become a very sophisticated interventional radiologist because it's a freehand technique and puncturing a tiny vessel, thin vessel. Then 
we proposed just to compress the vessel. If you compress B manually with the ultrasound and the finger, you can obtain, and it was published on Anderson surgery, a demarcation, transient demarcation, and you can do whatever in every segment of the liver. You can remove selectively and anatomically, meeting the oncological, oncological requirements, uh, any ACC. And uh, for the other tumors, I mean the metastatic disease or something, uh, or the cholangiocarcinoma, well, anyway, we have the ultrasound. Instead of doing this resection, we propose we can modify our trajectory of dividing the liver up to, this is a real operation we did, we, we, we des described it as a lower transversal hepatectomy to remove several lesions but leaving the entire skeleton of the liver in the facts the liver is not modified in its anatomy. <clears throat> which rules to get on board. You have to keep the liver skeleton. Which means this part and preserve the outflow of the liver. Concentrating to the liver skeleton. This was the real trick that has changed our life. We propose to detach a tumor from a vessel without margin, so to expose the tumor. We know that it works for the hepatocellular carcinoma, but we extended it to the cholangio and to the uh, colorectal liver meds. It was published on the Blungert book, which is the Bible of the liver surgery, and we have proven that this correct our approach because uh, it uh, has been recently uh, published on Anderson Surgical Oncology. If you detach the tumor, the risk of local recurrence is the same of uh, leaving some tissue surrounding. So, so-called R0 resection is the same of R1, we named R1 vascular resection. So, we have the oncological suitability of the approach and indeed the survival of the R1 vascular resection are the same, not significantly different with the survival of the R0 resection. Then in the uh, armamentarium of the liver surgeon nowadays, we have also the vascular detection, which means that we can remove tumors very big like a segment, this huge tumor in segment one, and the liver appear entirely inside. We just remove the liver, uh, the, not the liver, the, the tumor. <laughs> the second aspect is the uh, outflow. And the outflow is the most interesting aspect because of these vessels. Uh, we noticed and we reported that when you have a tumor occluding or compressing the hepatic vein at the caval confluence, the outflow is compressed. The blood has no way to come out from the liver. Well, the liver spontaneously opens shunting vein in between the hepatic vein, the adjacent hepatic vein. We have just to recognize and respect them, and then we can open thousands of new operations. the practical consequences. What I have uh, just said is making resectable the unresectable with new operation. It's what we did. And is the real journey inside the liver. We now can navigate the liver exactly like uh, uh, the first uh, attempt was the systematic extended right posterior sectionectomy in 2008 in which we had uh, this kind of uh, tumor invading here, other tumor here. This is the attitude. We p just decided to systematically pass on the other side of the liver because we knew that the blood from this part can be drained by the middle hepatic vein. This is another uh, presentation which demand normally a right hepatic vein. We gain enough liver to avoid uh, the liver failure. So we avoid the preparation of the liver and the two-stage procedure in most of the patients. 
and this is by dilation, we passed in between the tumor and the pedicle instead of following the yellow line. And, uh, sorry Procopio, I missed your name. Um, this was published on Analysis of Surgery 2008. The liver seems entirely there, but we removed the posterior aspect, resecting the right hepatic vein, but most of the liver was in the patient. The second step was the upper transversal apatectomy, Analysis of Surgical Oncology 2012. This is the tumor. This is the schema of the operation following the communicating vein. We cut two of the three hepatic veins, but we keep all the liver inside. And this is a patient, 38 women, with a huge metastasis in contact with the left, this is a CT film, Left hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein cannot be recognized, completely infiltrating, bulging above the pedicles. There are, we are already collaterals, and the patient can be operated with the entire liver inside, the removed part. Two of the three hepatic veins are resected. One is reconstructed, and this is the communicating vein com uh, confirmed intraoperatively. And this patient is still alive without disease. This was the CT three years later. And the radiologist mismatched these two vessels are hepatic vein, but in reality are portal branches. Because it was the first case done. This is the second patient with tumor invading uh, the hepatic veins. In, uh, the red circles are indicating the contact with the vessels. And the, the operation consists in the same of the previous one. This is the schema. And this is the tiny vessel that allowed us to do this operation. And after the resection, the entire liver is in the patient. And then uh, we proceed further, really navigating the organ with the mini mesopatectomy, which was the uh, first uh, step towards the tunnel of the liver. This is a tumor invading the middle hepatic vein. For this tumor, this part of the liver would have been removed, but we remove only this part, taking profit of the shunting vein. And this is an example, shunting vein, the tumor invading, and this is the shunting vein on the cut surface. All of the liver here should be drained by this vein, but in reality is drained by the shunting vein. Then the patient does all the entire liver inside. And this is another example of a new operation. This is the last one, 2014 liver tunnel. We did a real tunnel inside the liver with tumors in the posterior aspect. And this is the schema of uh, the operation. You see, it's a real navigation within the organ, preserving all the vessel. Up to now, we have done uh, 18 operations like this. It's the first, we, you know, we are the pioneering this kind of procedure. Just an example, a huge tumor here, occupying the central part of the liver. For this, tumor, for this uh, uh, kind of tumors, much smaller than this, the literature proposed the ex situ in vivo, which, mean, which means they remove the liver, go on the table, back table, clean the liver, and reposition the liver. We don't do nothing of this. It takes 10-15% uh, of mortality. This is the operation of this patient. And uh, this is the liver drained by the communicating vein. I move uh, further. New therapeutic solution. Then, if you recall, those operations that I mentioned before, the two stage, what we have done, we have almost obscured this kind of approach nowadays for this lesion. 
For this lesion with ultrasound, combining this operation, we can offer the operation of patient normally addressed to the two-stage procedure with one-stage operation. And then uh, we can op resect patient with tumors uh, like this, this uh, women with 38 lesion removed at once. There is a combination of the various operations that you have seen before. And the results of our approach nowadays, navigating the liver from four to 49 lesions were removed in one, one operation, 155 one-stage hepatectomy, only 10% receive a major hepatectomy, and the mortality is 0.6%. We have compared our approach with the, the one of the French team that devised the stage operation, and we got significantly better results in all uh, the, 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 the aspects we uh, analyzed, including the R1. And the survival, we don't have the dropout because all the patients, the, the green line, receive operation at once, and we, if we do an intention to treat analysis, there is a significant bef, uh, uh, benefit of our approach. This is done with the pleasure of the hospital, with the very simple devices, the ultrasound, the scissor, and this forcep. That's all. The ultrasound permit us to navigate the liver and then to do operation that uh, can be uh, also fascinating. This is, this is what does it mean navigating the liver. This is the dissection plan. You know, the surgeon navigate the liver and detach the tumor from the vessel and offer to this patient in one operation the removal of all the liver, keeping the liver inside. And, uh, doing a resection area which, is, which are very complex. This patient has 44 lesions removed at once. Uh, being uh, an educational uh, challenge, because this is the question that uh, ask always to us, reproducibility, just to let you know, this is an updated graphic. 78% of the operation in my team are done not by me. This is initially period, training, 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 training. And from 41 to 32 years old, the team is young and they can do the operation that most of the operation that you have seen. Only the liver tunnel is not done by them. Education and training, the effort is the challenge is to find a way to teach the surgeon to become accustomed to use the ultrasound. And we do a lot of effort. We, we search among the student people that have passion in this sense. Uh, surgery is uh, still uh, uh, fascinating, uh, and with technology is uh, even more fascinating as a uh, uh, field of... Uh, medicine. We have uh, many courses uh, in Italy, abroad, a book. And uh, nowadays we have technology that uh, is providing us uh, new approaches with the uh, navigation, mixing up, and let speed up the growing, uh, the, the, the education of the surgeon, the CT with the ultrasound into the operation. With the, this is the cast of the patient that was going to be operated. We can match see, uh, the ultrasound with the MRI, the same scan. The MRI follow the movement of our probe. And nowadays, uh, this is very useful for training the young surgeon and uh, also to detect the disappeared lesion into the liver that can be colored on the CT previous, the treatment, the medical treatment before surgery. And then, like the, in this case, we removed uh, up to 18 lesions in a live demo last year in this meeting, in, which was held in this, in this hospital. 18 lesions removed, three hepatic reconstructed, P67 reconstructed. 
a complex operation, navigate it, then uh, the journey is, is safe, provides adequate disease control, enhances the resectability, provides adequate long-term results, and surgery can be trained in doing it. I want to thank uh, all the guys that has joined this story. It's a fascinating story. We have a depth with each of them for their own contribution. I have a depth uh, with the Professor Makuchi that uh, has trained me and thinks that, uh, you know, uh, I wish all of you will have uh, the privilege to have one, one master, is, uh, and if so, try to honor him. I thank also the Chancellor because uh, he has introduced me to surgery and to Humanitas, and also Humanitas, which is celebrating the 20th anniversary. My team, with some new entrants. <laughs> and uh, and uh, thank you for surviving uh, to this uh, lecture. Just a moment. <laughs> it's not finished. Don't stop dreaming. I am a fan of Inter. Thank you very much. <laughs>